What is going on my fellow Patriots? My name is David, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to take some time out to address a question I do get asked quite often, and that is, what do I need to do to become a prepper? How do I become a prepper? So right off the bat, I wanna clear up a common misconception. I think TV warps people's perception on a lot of things, um, cable television, reality shows, stuff like that. And I've seen bits and pieces of these prepper shows and these people have these underground bunker houses and stuff like that, um, something of that sorts. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think about 90% of us preppers are people who just kind of do it in their free time and just do it when they have spare money uh, to put towards it and not people who spend their life savings or, you know, paychecks on it. Nothing wrong with that if you do, if you have the means, that's that's awesome. But, you know, most of us don't. So you don't got to be some rich millionaire to be able to do it. It's just little by little. It's just collecting stuff, collecting practical things little by little until, you know, maybe the day will come where you're going to need them. Step one, in some way, shape or form, all of us preppers do not like the fucking government. We do not trust the government to take care of us. We want to be self-sufficient. The government fucks us every single chance they get. They don't care about us, so if something bad was to happen, us preppers believe that they're not gonna take care of us. We want to be able to take care of ourselves and provide for our families just in case something bad happens. And if something bad don't happen, we have a bunch of cool shit to show our friends. Step two, collect shit. It's that simple, it's that easy. You don't gotta do it on a huge scale and collect thousands of dollars worth of stuff in the first week. All you have to do is just collect stuff that would be useful if a catastrophe happened, if something bad happened to where you couldn't rely on the things that you rely on every single day. Great guideline, if you're lost on what to collect, you have no idea where to even start, would be the rule of threes. In the outdoors community, we have something called the rule of threes. It's a generalization. Um, there are some weird outliers every once in a while, but you know, generally speaking, the rule of threes is a good place to start. So the rule of three goes that you can survive three minutes without air, three hours without shelter in a rough condition, three days without water, and three weeks without food. And some people add some extras on there, whatever, but that's basically, generally speaking, that is the rule of threes. So based on the rule of threes, a good place to start would be a way to make shelter. You need to collect ways to make shelter. So in my bag, I have tarps, tents, I collect tents, um, ponchos, plastic, anything to make a shelter but this is what i have in my bag a tent a small one person tent and a tarp like this you want to be able to make a shelter collect a bunch of those why not just in case something happens you can set some survival bags up a couple different bags with a couple different ways to make shelter in there and it's also good to know how to make a primitive shelter as well now you're three days without water you want to have water collect water i have a bunch of these i have a bunch of uh jugs of water gallon jugs of water um, collect ways to collect ways to purify water, collect um, lighters and stuff to start fires to be able to boil water, collect a couple metal pans to put in your bags and metal bowls to be able to boil the water, um, water tablets to purify the water. Um, you'll die of thirst way before you'll die of hunger, according to our rule of threes. Right next to water and shelter, fire is, oh my God, so important. You just, most people have no idea what it's like to be cold and wet and hungry and oh god so if you can help it collect for a fire you need a fire oh my god you need a fire most preppers have this right here just dryer lint we have it shoved in a bag with a bunch of other flammable shit just in case you know i want to be able to just in case you can't start a fire good you need something flammable this is awesome it's free you get it every time you do laundry we have it in a bag collecting it in a bag some people might call me crazy i just say i like being warm I just got gifted these, Mr. Lionfish. Thank you so much, buddy. These are amazing. Um, little pieces of wood. It looks like pine, maybe. I'm not sure. But it's just soaked in kerosene or gasoline, one of the two. Lighter fluid, something like that. Something super flammable. Little containers to carry them in. Just little things like that. Get creative. Lighters, matches, just, oh my God, anything. This stuff is, fire is so, so important. Get creative, find as many things as you can and just start collecting lighters and matches. You can never have enough. That's gonna be a currency one day maybe, you never know. Get rich. Next up on our rule of threes, MREs. Those things are amazing. They have a shelf life, five, 10, 15 years, any kind of freeze dried, vacuum sealed bag, beef jerky, something like that. Something the weather can't get to and it's sealed up to where air can't get to it. It's not gonna rot anytime soon, it's not gonna go bad. I'm gonna be able to keep that 
for a really long time. Military uses them. They work great. They're not that bad. I've eaten a couple of them. They're really not bad. They taste all right. I know it's the last thing on our rule of threes is three weeks without food, but you know, you get four or five days in, you get pretty hungry, then you know, it kind of sucks. So step three, where were we? Step one, fuck the government. Step two, collect stuff, start small. It's hard to explain a step three because step three is so broad. Step one and two, pretty much everybody, everybody starts there. And then step three is like, you just go wherever you want with it. I might be comfortable with six months of food put up. You might be comfortable with six years of food put up. You know, it's just however you want to, however you want to swing it. You know, you just do it however you want to do it. I just think that's a good base. That's a good foundation to start on. And, you know, you can start getting guns. You can start getting ammunition, bug out bags, start getting six or eight bug out bags set up. You could get a, turn your house into, you know, fortify your house more. And step four, my favorite step, wish a motherfucker would come take it from you. You are out of your mind if you think that at the end of times or a bad catastrophe happens, that people aren't going to be knocking on your door, kicking your door in, trying to get the shit that you've collected. Think about this for a second. What would you do for your kids? Say you have a four-month-old that hadn't eaten in two days, and you have no formula, and you need formula, or you need something for the baby to eat. What would you do for her? You know what you'd do. Your next-door neighbor is going to do the same thing, or the dude down the road that needs it is going to do the same thing. And if he knows you have it, there's going to be a war. You better be able to defend yourself. You better be able to defend your property and everything you've got because there are going to be people coming for it. All right, let's recap this. Step one, fuck the government. Step two, start collecting. Start small. Step three, wherever you want to take it, wherever you want to take it, however you feel, however far you feel like going. And step four, wish a motherfucker would come take it from you. If I could give anybody any piece of advice and life or the prepper journey or anything like that would be be self-reliant don't depend on anybody for shit if you can help it and that is all i got for you today my friends god bless america communist lives do not matter and i will see you patriots next week